Good morning, everyone. Sorry for the noise. Thank you for having me again. And uh, I'm a little bit emotional because I just left a few months ago and I'm back here. Uh, and this time from Leipzig, so the layout of my slides has changed, but a lot of the contents and it's actually come from all I've learned and done here in Toronto. And uh, so I want to congratulate uh, Jacobo for putting together the course. He thanked me, but I haven't really done much. He said, I have this idea, and I just said, yeah, that's a good idea, you should do it. And, and he's done all of the work, so I shouldn't take much of a credit. So the idea of this talk was just to go over the, so you've heard about the basic 3D technology and the image acquisition mode from uh, Dr. Tseng. So I'd like to talk about uh, what can be done to make our 3D images a little bit better and what can we done with the 3D images. So I don't have any disclosure on this topic. And as you heard already, so one of the main, one of the things that make ECHO in general sometimes a little bit confusing and 3D even more so is the proprietary strings that go through the different vendors. Why? Because when some vendors comes up with a new technology or a new mode, they give it a name and they trademark it. So now that name cannot be used by anybody else. So when something similar, another uh, company makes something similar, then they have to use a different name. So often when you go across platforms, you'll notice that there are so many different names, but at the end of the day, they do something that's a little different, but it's not so different. So that is one of the things. And one of the things that I always find funny and a bit confusing is that actually, when you go, we are talking about 3D, we all agree 3D, 3D, but then if you go to some of the platform, you look for a 3D button, there's no 3D button. So the only button that you find is that's 4D. So some of the vendors call it 4D as they mean that it's a 3D image that moves over time. What it's, what it's, what it eventually comes down to, as we heard, and I think Wendy did a wonderful job at trying to keep everything as vendor independent as possible, is that there's three steps to the image acquisition. So one is the data acquisition, then there's a processing, and then that's how we display. And that's how we summarize it in a paper uh, I wrote many years ago with Annette and that's when you display. What happened with 2D images where all we're uh, used to is that once you have a 2D image, then there's not much you can do. So you have a 2D image, you can play, you can look at it, you can save it, store it, put it in your presentation, but then you can pause it and you can freeze, you can take measurements, both for 2D images as well as documents. <coughs> but that's it, if this is a bad image, it's a bad image, too bad. So you can't go really back to the patient and do anything. When for 3D, it's different because what we do is we actually now scan a 3D space and of that 3D space, we know all the characteristics of the tissue. As Wendy mentioned, the resolution is not exactly the same in all planes and there's one of the three planes where the resolution is not as good, but we know the characteristics of the tissue. So we now have voxels and what we can do is we can then, once we know this, we have a data set. So we have a block, we know everything that's inside the block, then we can still do a lot of stuff with the block. And <coughs> normally what we do is we try to display this block in a way that looks like something that's three-dimensional. And to do that, like the machines, as we saw before, use technology that sort of been taken from many, many years ago. This is a, a, a painting, Italian painting from the sixth, uh, 17th century. And what they did is they used shining lights on this block and used different shades of different colors to keep the, the feeling of depth of this block. So <coughs> I uh, developed, uh, thanks to the support of the Peter McCardick Foundation and the help of some of the people here, one of them was Wendy, these um, uh, a, a few little videos that are posted online and on, uh, on the ECHO website, which I'd like to use here to just go over some of the things that we can do with uh, our um, 3D data sets once they are acquired. So and obviously I have video two videos for two separate vendors <coughs> and uh, there's no point of hiding names and one is Philips. So we're starting with the Philips uh, with the Philips system, and this what you see here right now 
is something that you can go home and actually watch on, on, on your own if it's again. And what I did is here you see your data set which we have acquired, it's in the machine. And now here is the, the screen with the, with the, with the, uh, all the buttons that we can touch. And here we have something that moves and looks like it's a three dimensional object. So and one of the first thing that you can do once you have something, now this is the image that we don't only have a picture like a playing 2D image. Now we have something that we can play with. We can still do stuff. So and one of the very basic first thing that we can do, and we sort of saw it at the top, is we can actually rotate. Whenever we have something new in our hands or something that's three dimensional, what we can do, that's good. We can just take it and move it around and see what's inside. So that's simple. I know all you figure it out. So and with <coughs> a trackball, usually you can move this box into different into different orientation and and so <coughs> we can sort of see what's inside see what if from different orientations we can understand things a little bit better this is a mitral valve we looked at it from the uh, arterial aortic side uh, atrial side now we flipped it we looked from the ventricular side now we put it again unfast so we have the structure we're interested in this is the mitral valve it's looking at us and also something that's kind of useful is the rotation like a clock so in that's what we call z plane so that allows us to keep the object parallel to the screen and rotate it clockwise and counterclockwise also there's an option where here now you can see we're looking at this object from the top so we, we this is a mitral valve we look at the mitral valve from the uh, atrial side of the mitral valve so there is a feature that allow us to actually um, uh, every time we get lost to go back to where the block started or to where the block was presented to us and that's the the actually the the home so what else can we do so we can again as said we can look at this block from the top we have the possibility to look at this same block from two perspectives at the same time, and this is called dual volume layout. So here we see the mitral valve from the R, from the atrial side, and at the same time we can look at the same structure from the ventricular side. We just take the block and flip it, and we can display it simultaneously. Um, sometimes gives us the opportunity to sort of store more data at the same time. Uh, but we can just take it and flip it as we want uh, without uh, this feature, but it's a cool feature that actually it's uh, especially nice for the, when we save this image and put it in our report, we sort of save one step and one image. Something that I find that it's, uh, it's been very useful to me is uh, um, the fact that sometimes, especially when we go, we've acquired a 3D block, we store it and now maybe a couple of days later or later in the day we go back and we look at this 3D block and we're wondering and say, what is this? And you look at outside from this block and you really have not much of an idea. So in one of the uh, features that I, I find useful is that when we look at the 3D block, we can look at it as a rendered picture as you can see here. That is like this pyramid that like some feature try to make it as cool as possible or as realistic as possible, but also we can look at the same block with two perpendicular planes that are cutting through the block in 2D. So for example, so this is the plane where the image acquisition started, cuts in the center, and this plane here cuts perpendicular. So we can display the 3D block as a 3D block or a 3D block plus 2D images. What I personally find is that, especially for all of us who have done We've, we've learned 3D, they haven't start, we haven't started with 3D. When we look at this block, sometimes we say, no idea. But then we look at a uh, 2D image that cuts through it, say, oh, that's a mitral valve, because we're actually used to it. So that's one of the feature, and depending on the system, we can display it as uh, two perpendicular images at the top, or three perpendicular images. That's the plane of origin, the perpendicular plane, and the plane that cuts through it. Or now there's also something that's called, <coughs> and the different vendors have different ways of 
this was from a previous version of the software where these e planes are perpendicular to each other then cutting in the center you can change the angle and now you can actually change the angle so finally as I said for 2D images there's not much we can do but for 3D images there's still a lot we can do once we have the image and one of the things that we can do that I initially thought it was very cool is that you can actually change some of the settings even though the patient is gone and the image was taken time uh, before when you do this so the first thing that we can change and we are uh, all encouraged to do is is the game so normally for 2D images once the image is acquired it's over again it's over again so there's not much we can do but with 3D images we can still change the game and here at the top of the screen here you can see that this was the original gain at which the image was acquired and this is the new gain you can see that as we increase the gain the tissue becomes uh, less transparent but we also then when we over gain in 3d we have this fog that prevents us from seeing anything and actually as we will practice on on the models uh, uh, later normally what we need to do is not increase the gain but actually decrease the gain when we go from 2d to 3d the other thing is when we decrease the gain with 3d you can see it's very easy to make things transparent so what is the optimal gain and is this a real gap or is it under gain so what we are looking and Exam that has 2D images. So what you see there has to make sense in, in 2D as well as in 3D. Depending on what we're interested, for example, as who came for the earlier talk, we were talking about a percutaneous procedure. When we do mitra clips and the clip is over the valve, we want to see the clip and the leaflet. When the clip goes under the valve, we want to see the clip and we can make the leaflet transparent. So in that case, we decrease the gain to purposely make the clip transparent. As you saw here, one of the things that we could do, we can also change the compression. So similarly to what you do in 2D, you can actually change the compression. And the compression would allow you to sort of uh, increase the um, uh, contrast of the different colors that are used and the shades that are used in this image and it's something that can uh, further be done to uh, optimize your image uh, finally um, uh, we can this is sort of we can change the we can change the the, 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 the combination of colors that are used to display this image and this is sort of the standard combination of colors that most of us use and find useful and used to we used to interpret this image but can be changed so here we've just changed to a different setting so we're using just one color and different shades so and uh, as you saw from uh, uh, dr Zeng's uh, uh, presentation now with the uh, philip system you also have this option to make it look like a real tissue which is called true view and i'm sure the software is loaded uh, on the new machine and you will be able to do it with the um, uh, systems that we have here <coughs> then the last uh, sort of setting that i found i find uh, um, useful to optimize the image is something that's called smoothing so smoothing is uh, is a feature that basically allow us to make the surface of this uh, block that we have uh, a little bit as as it says as the word says smoother or less smooth this was sorry we were changing the uh, brightness so we can make it brighter or less bright and then finally this is the smoothing which is this feature as you can see with increasing the smoothing uh, you see how the surface of our tissue becomes sort of more homogeneous as you can see here it's more homogeneous which sometimes it depends on what we're looking for sometimes it, it helps to <coughs> present to the surgeon or our colleagues a better a better image 
but also uh, when we e when we increase the smoothness too much, then we lose the some of the character tissue characteristics that are seen in the original in the original clip. So I've used this as an example, and uh, <coughs> this was using the. Um, one of the two system and <coughs> so similarly to, to to what you saw for the Philips system this is something that can also be done with the um, with the G system and uh, uh, although <coughs> the names of the buttons are a little bit different because what uh, what is for one vendor called gain for for G is called uh, is called active mode or 2D but again, this was just an example how if we have a big pyramid with a big data set with the whole ventricle and the left atrium, we're looking inside the mitral valve. And then again, we have this block, we can try to make it nicer. And this is, we've decreased the gain and we've made this valve tissue transparent or we can increase the gain to make it just right. And uh, while for uh, 2D images, what's the right gain? Uh, this is something that I couldn't really find in any books, but it's something I learned from Annette that says blood is black. So uh, we need to uh, we see the blood is black. If we see the 2D image together with the 3D image, then we can use that as to help us. But otherwise, we have to use our sort of clinical and common sense and judgment in order to set the right gain so we can see the uh, structures the way they are supposed to be. One of the features of these, all of the vendors have tried different ways of actually um, uh, making uh, the blocks uh, as three-dimensional as possible. And uh, one of them that's a sort of unique feature about uh, GE uh, is the fact that we can use uh, something that uh, uh, actually no one else has that's called uh, stereo vision and stereo vision gives us this uh, kind of block that with like naked eye it looks a bit weird but if we had uh, 3d go 3d glasses with red and blue then we would see the structure popping out of the screen so and that applies that works for 2d images so for the 3d block in the tissue itself as well as with the color okay so I think uh, I'll probably stop here. Uh, you can obviously uh, review this video and other videos that we've created and they are posted on the website. I'd like to thank uh, Jacobo again for inviting me and I'd like to congratulate him and all of the team here in Toronto who put together this course. I hope you'll enjoy and we'll spend more time together here and uh, we always take the opportunity to invite you to visit us in Leipzig and this would be a good opportunity is the EACTA Eco Conference that's coming up next uh, June.